Okay, that was like a really unenthusiastic welcome to the show. It really was. I, I clapped. Woo te- woo. I tenderly clapped and yelled because um, my dogs have just settled near my feet. Oh, Vic and fair. Burger. Okay. And that now, makes sense. now Vic's like smelling the air conditioner. I had to turn off. It's a big to do. So but welcome I was to very, regular girls. Uh, yeah, welcome to regular girls, guys. Um, I was really close to inviting Blue up here for this recording session because. Um, him and I have developed what I'm going to say is a codependence upon each other. I have noticed um, that on Instagram, I'm like, yeah, it, you seem to be with him more than anyone else in your life. Yeah. I mean, I'm with John a considerable amount. I just don't post it. Um, but I'm, I I'm disagree. Also if, like, if it doesn't exist online, I don't believe it. I feel like <laughs> John no longer exists. He's yeah, harpooning po- somewhere picture, in peace. It's not real or whatever the <laughs> F people say. Um, yeah, so I was going to bring Blue up here. And then, yeah. anyways, I didn't. But that's leading me to this other story that happened yesterday. Um, so I've been on this kick okay. with um, being out in Vegas. Um, I'm super into, obviously, watching the Las Vegas Golden Knights play hockey right now. It's an unbelievable story. Uh, the biggest story in all of sports right now, easily. I agree. Um, yeah, and it's so fun to be a part of. John and I got to go down to uh, Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Finals Uh to Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Yeah, I saw it um, on Instagram and I lost my goddamn shit. Oh my God, it was so fun. We got to go down. I got to jump on uh, NHL Network with uh, my friend Jackie Redman. We used to work at the score together. Yeah. Um, so I hopped on with her. Um, we went and rode the Zamboni, which we it was fun, but we looked a little ridiculous because nobody cared, um, uh, which is fine. But um, anyway, so I've been super into watching hockey and it's like reignited... Uh, my love of playing ringette, which I know many people have no effing clue what ringette is, but it's basically yeah, it's it's similar to hockey in the sense that it's played on ice. You wear skates, blah blah blah. But I right. used to play until I was like in my twenties. Like I played for forever, um, but I stopped playing. So I was like, you know what? F this. I'm gonna order some new equipment and I'm gonna rent some ice in Las Vegas and just go like, you know, mess around, get on the ice, skate around, do whatever. So cool. I ordered. Yeah, yeah, I'm like super excited about it. So I finally ordered some stuff. I still have to go buy skates, but I needed to buy some stuff from Canada. But it took like two weeks to ship it down here. This is such a long-winded story. I'm so sorry, but it I'm needs invested. To set up. So I ordered all the equipment. I had to get a stick. I bought a bunch of rings. Uh, you wear a girdle and then like ringette pants, which are just like nylon pants, whatever. Um, so I'm upstairs changing our bed sheets yesterday. Uh, boring, but whatever. I'm a domesticated woman, mm-hmm. and I hear this like clatter bang like these like wild sounds coming from downstairs I'm like what the hell is happening right so my stuff was delivered yesterday <clears throat> and john decided to put it all on no um, put it all on um but he, he couldn't fit in the girdle so he was wearing that on his head came upstairs in rollerblades so now he's like 11 feet tall he looks gigantic just clamoring up the stairs he also does not know how to rollerblade let that be known Um, so he's just like baby deer stepping in all of this equipment. Not really sure what any of it means, but Blue lost his shit. Really? He went mental. So Blue's upstairs with me and he like, anytime I even put on rollerblades, uh, yes, I put on rollerblades, uh, from time to time. He goes ballistic. He can't handle it. But anyways, he freaked out so bad yesterday that like he squirted something out of his butt. Oh Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, that I know was, the butt life. That was almost a four minute long story to me to tell you that my dog squirted stuff out of his butt. But you needed the lead up to know why John was wearing that equipment. Yes. Blah, blah, well, blah. But no, uh, I, yeah, I, it's crazy. Yeah, I know about the butt life. Um, Burger does that. Vic does oh, that. Burger, Burger was my initial. Um, uh, he, yeah. he's, he took me through the steps. Yeah, I mean, butt life, it's happening. But I also love that you were like. God damn it. I want to play ringette. I'm I'm just going to rent some ice for myself to tinker around on. Yeah, well. I thought the general story would be you finding a ringette group in Vegas. Oh, my God. No, so that didn't happen. But what I will say that was cool. So when we went down to go ride the Zambonis in the first intermission, the girl that came to get us to bring us all the way down to the Zamboni area, she was telling me that she plays in, like, a women's league out here, but, like, hockey. Like, I'm okay to go play some hockey. I'm better at ringette, but, like, I will play hockey. Yeah, like, I think that I will join a group because I had messaged a group thing before at one of the arenas out here, and it was a co-ed league, which is fine. I've played co-ed before, too. But, um, yeah, I would like to play in, like, a women's league. I think it would be really fun. 
I, that would, I, I, yeah. That would be the most fun. That'd be so great. Yeah, there's nothing more fun than like going to play like a sport and then you go and have like some beer and wings after and life is great. It's so nice. And I yeah. just miss being on the ice. It's so hot here. What a nice mm-hmm. little like uh, a breath of fresh air it would be. No, it's so true. I, I really like like I played soccer for many years and I kind of like miss that competitive yeah. exertion of energy. Like it's really nice and it's like it's nice to have like pals. It totally, you get those pals, you get out, you burn off some steam, have a little fun, but it also qualifies as your exercise. Let's not kid ourselves on that. Well, let's, okay. I mean, I want that to be my cardio day. It would be great. I mean, so I, I have Barb, my bike I was talking about last week. Yeah. Oh my God. Are you selling Barb? What's going on? Barb. So Barb. Okay. So I bought Barb from Canadian Tire, which we discussed last week, which is a kind of like a home like a hardware Depot. store. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, like a Home Depot had sex with a Walmart and that's Canadian. Mm-hmm. So um, exactly. I bought Barb and I was like, oh, the Barb's fine. And then when I drove or biked Barb from Canadian Tire back to my house, I was like, Barb is a bit heavy. Okay. And then, then I biked Barb to work at Second City and I was like, that took a substantial amount of time to get oh, here. No. And I was like soaked through my clothes. Like I had to start ah. taking showers when I got to work. Um, which is whatever I do anyways during the summer, but I was like, what is happening? And then my castmate, um, Chris was going to a similar destination as me. And so he was like, well, I'll ride my bike and you ride your bike and you can like test out. And I mean, I died like a a small hill. Like he just disappeared. Like I couldn't even get up the hill. Wow. So it's so heavy, um, that, uh, but literally, I've lost like five pounds just biking Barb around the city. Isn't that amazing? It's so great. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Just I, like those simple little changes. Like this morning, we got up and uh, we like to go for like a walk around the neighborhood like senior nice. citizens. Um, so we did that. And then I went to go do yoga today. But even just doing that thing of like going for a walk where like mm-hmm. you're just chatting and hanging out and going for a stroll. But it's still like we walk. It's close to three miles. So it's still like it counts. All that oh, stuff counts. It for sure counts. I mean, like, it is so hot here in Toronto. And, like, it's, it, is it humid in Vegas? It, you, you don't have humidity. Not at all. No, so none, no humidity. so humid here that it's, like, it's like sickeningly. Ugh. Yeah, it's hot. So, um, Barb, I, I sold today to an, a petite little Australian woman who got on the bike and, like, took off immediately. Was gone. Didn't, didn't <laughs> test her. Didn't test out Barb. She just got on her. It felt right. She handed me some cash and off. She went to Canadian Tire to get a basket. I thought, oh my God, great. She's going to treat her well. But on Instagram, I was laughing at uh, Justice for Barb, Save Barb. And I was like, guys, I died. we are starting a movement that no one yeah. understands. <laughs> a, a movement was afoot. I saw that. Yes. I don't know if I commented or if I just knew I was like, oh, we have to hash this yes. out today because that was like a quick turnaround. So yes. what are you going to do for your new bite? Well, OK, so I was in therapy and my therapist was like, well, you're impulsive. And I was like, please. Fuck I off. don't think so. Sorry, and then, guys, I didn't mean to swear. I've been doing so good. <laughs> You've been, been doing great. so good. But she was absolutely right. Very impulsive purchase. Um, so I'm going to invest. Like, I have to invest. I think I'm going to spend like like 400 bucks on a nice, great. light, little bike. A little sassy ride. Get a bike ride. that is like, that will be your bike for Ever. a couple years. For yeah, sure. or forever. I have um, to Instead invest. of like a seasonal bike that turns to crap and you get a new one. I think she's right. She's absolutely right. So um, now I have a, a thing on my fridge that says don't um, don't lose $100 because I literally bought the bike and I couldn't return it. So I think I lost like 50 bucks on it, but I made most of my money back. Okay. Well, that's okay. It's At least fine. you sold it and like you made yeah. a move. The Australian woman is probably doing great. Oh, she seemed so like that's she had. Nice. The, and she had recognized me from the show. Oh, um, yeah, she was sweet about it. And, That's really uh, nice. Yeah, and I forgot to get my bell from her, so she just biked away with all with my little bell, and like off she went on. She Barb. took it all. But I, um, she, I saw yeah. I saw a really cute little bell. They they sell bike bells on Free People. They do. Yeah, and they're really cute. They're all like painted with flowers. I think I'm gonna get one. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I'm nervous. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get something too too flashy because then it will get stolen. You're gonna get yeah yeah. It's gonna get taxed straight up. Oh yeah, so, so take it. I got to get, so now I got to get a new bike, but like, I love biking around the city. I feel like a real freaking cool chick. 
Yeah, A, it makes you feel cool because um, it means that you know what's up. Because anyone that yeah. lives in the city rides your bike. I never I never had a bike when I lived in the city, but I would like, I don't know, I just walked everywhere or whatever, heel toe. Right. Um, but having a bike, it is just the most efficient way to get around town. It's really great. It's really... Duck and weave. I, I do need to tell you, I was riding Barb and I was leaving um, like, a bre- like a breakfast with someone or a, a friend with a... A friend with a coffee. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is where I, it's very humid here. Um, (laughs) And I was biking with Birkenstocks, um, uh, like off brand ones. And um, I hit a bump and my Birkenstock fell off my foot. No! At, um, and you'll get this because you're from Toronto, but it was Richmond and Spadina, like very you're active. Done. done. The shoe was gone. There was no turning back. <laughs> so that I was like, I was like, I don't have a shoe and I <laughs> need to get home. What did you do? You just pedaled barefoot? <laughs> yeah, one barefoot. But, um, but like when you're on a bike and you get to a stop sign, you have to like put your foot yes. on the side of the road. Oh my God. <laughs> and that was the foot. And I was just like, I was freaking out like laughing so hard but also so mortified and then and also barb is not fast so it was like a substantial bike home like people had time to get their eyes on you oh more than enough and there were some looks like what and then uh to get up the hill i had to like change gears and it was hard to get up the hill with only one shoe oh my god and pedals are sharp pedals (laughs) usually have like sharp little stabby things it was not a comfortable ride and then i bumped into like (laughs) A girl from the community who's like beautiful and gorgeous. And she was just like beautifully in a summer dress on her phone. And she's like, hi, Stacey. And I had sweat through my shirt just out of (laughs) sheer nervousness and lack of shoe. And I was like, hi. And I kept biking (laughs) to get home like one shoe. 32 years old on a Canadian tire bike whose shoe is now at Richmond and Spadina. That is my favorite story. <laughs> I think the sweating out of fear is also amazing. I am. D- that's so great. I literally I love was, that. Oh, I was mortified. I mean, it's like it was so funny. Like the shoe is got to throw out the God. shoe. Obviously, R.I.P. Obviously, R.I.P. to Sandal. Straight up to shoe heaven. Yeah, absolutely. And thank God it was an off brand. Can you imagine it was a full brand mm. Birkenstock? I'm not turning around at Rich so but I know. I actually just got Birkenstocks. My cousin Amanda, she was like, I'm telling you, buy Birkenstocks. Have you're going to gonna love it. I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready for this part, like, part of my life to kick in. No, you're ready. But she was like, do it. So I, I did. I got them. I'm wearing them right now. They are a game changer. So I had a pair before, but I had like the regular like classic two strap one. Right. Uh, and the ones I have now are like kind of that, but it has like the little like toe bit. Right. I don't know. But um, yeah, once you break them in, it's it truly is a granola game changer. It is. It's the best. After working out, you just slip them on. It's the best uh, when you go camping, you put on a wool sock underneath. It, yeah. They're the best. I mean, yeah, that's, they are. That's one thing I kind of feel like I did miss out on in getting the two strap one is I can't, I could never put a sock under it. Not that we See. recommend socks and sandals, you guys. But like Stacey said, if you're out camping or something, it's cute. it works. It's a cute little look. Yeah. It that's is a why cute little look. I like to get that. But like, Shit, maybe I should order another pair. I mean, t- but tighten them if you're going to go on that cruiser with John. Don't get that. Uh, don't no, get no. The, the lost Birkenstock. We See, don't I want feel that. Like maybe I should have a word with your therapist as well because I'm incredibly impulsive like that too, too. I'm like, wait, I got the wrong Birkenstock. I need the other ones immediately. Yes. And I like, I freak out and I have no control over it. It is quite bad. No, I get really. I, I when she said that, I had no idea. I just thought I was like a woman who knew what she wanted. But I'm just yep. so easily like. I was sitting at home and um, and I was looking up like protein shakes or something. And then I just like bought a $60 box me. of collagen. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible and I don't regret getting the collagen powder, but needless to say. It is like, I. so I've been like that recently. So uh, it was just Memorial Day and there's all these sales. So I did buy oh, yeah. some clothes for work, whatever. There was good sales. So I did do that. But I've... <laughs> Recently, I, so I hate my purse. I'm also just not a purse person. Me neither. I don't, couldn't care less. I don't give. I don't give any cares about them. Couldn't give a crap about a purse. Um, but what I was, I was like, oh, maybe I should get like a cute little backpack, and For that sure. would actually be more beneficial. But the, I keep looking at them, and I, so I ordered one, but it went to Birmingham. So now I just don't have it, and it's gone. Um, what do you mean they're I, not going to send it to you? I, I mean, I guess I would just have to call the hotel. Maybe they have it. I don't know. Well, of course they have it. Call them and get the the backpack sent to you. You crazy? I'm gonna do that. 
You're right. I'm going to do that one. See, this is my problem. I go, well, they have it now. I guess I just need a new one. No, that's not that like a really re- bad. It's not like a receptionist in Birmingham is like, oh my God, this backpack's all for me. Okay. Yeah, like, no, that's have true. Get them to send it to you. What do you, yeah. you get? Matt Nads? What is it? Not no. Matt Nads. What is it called? Matt Nat. Matt Nads is a guy in the Toronto oh, community. Uh, Matt, hi, Matt, hi, oh, Matt. I know what you mean. Um, God, what is that called? I can't remember. Matt and... I haven't even heard of that in forever, but I know what you mean. Um, no, it was just one off of Free People. I order oh, everything okay. off of Free People. Um, and it was just like a little mini, like, cute little black backpack. But I feel like that's, I mean, like, I remember Sarah Silverman saying that. But she she was promoting, like, the backpack. Like, the, the Herschel. Full backpack. Yeah, like, she was just like, why are we spending, like, $20,000? Like, there's a, are uh, Birkins, like, twenty grand. It, it's so like I couldn't imagine yeah. having so much money that you're just like I'm gonna have this purse because it's the look that I need. Like I like nice things, of but course. not. I don't want something that I'm gonna lose sleep over. I couldn't sleep for a month if I bought a twenty thousand dollar purse. I oh my do god! It. And what do you, like I. I never, when someone walks in the room, go, look at that bag. Never. Not never. once in my life have I done that. Couldn't never. Couldn't give a shit. No. I really no, couldn't. me neither. No. A shoe? Yes. Sure, but even then, I'm still like, do I want a pair of Louboutins? No. Not really. Couldn't care. No, I, don't I care. mean, I don't even know. Anything over, anything over like $500 for a shoe, and that's like, I mean, like, when we're talking about like having something expensive, I do not have a yeah. lot of five hundred dollar pairs of shoes. Let's make that very clear. Yeah, me but like either. if it was something that I really wanted, I could justify that. Sure. Anything more than that, like I have a pair of like Chanel combat boots that are very expensive. I never wear them. Why? I never wear them because I don't even think I like them that much. I prefer my Docs. Right. Um, but they were like I bought them. So you get like a, a wardrobe allowance. Uh, I got that when I was doing Total Divas. I have one anyways, but um, I, I, I used it when I was doing Total Divas. I was like, I guess I should buy something. So I did buy something uh, that I wouldn't normally buy myself. But yeah, I never wear them. It's right. not for me. It's just not really my look. Having fancy stuff like that. It's not, it's not, maybe I should start wearing them. I don't know. Well, I mean, you have them. I say wear them. But I also am like, I totally get it because it's like, I don't want to mess them up. And if I'm uncomfortable because I'm like, like I'm scared. Like I saw a woman the other day in a full white blazer. Like it was a nice, beautiful blazer, like a cape blazer. Yeah. And these like silk white pants. And she had already like scuffed the knee. I was like, did you fall? Like what happened? (laughs) I was like, your day's ruined. But I was also like, I would never. Like she looked expensive and she had like one of those like, she, her purse looked expensive. She just looked expensive. But I was like, I would be too scared to live in yeah, this outfit. It makes you like, yeah, you're like trepidatious about everything. But like with the Chanel ones, like I do, I like the way, I like the way they look. They're cool and they're fine. Like I want, I went the combat boot route because I figured I would get more wear out of them. Where if I bought like a really expensive heel, I never wear heels in real life. Never. Who, who does? I mean, that who just does? seems insane. Do you know what blows my mind is when I see women at the airport in full heels. Can't. Like, what are you doing? I can't. Oh my gosh. What? Yeah. What are you thinking? See, that's my problem right now. And for the summer, I need a summer shoe. And like, I'm Burks. I, get the Burks. Bur- I know, but it's like I want something kind of nice, maybe a mule. Oh, but yeah. I mean, I can't do a Converse. I mean, what am I? When am I doing a kids play? Yeah, we're a little over Converse. It's I'm over Converse. I don't even. Yeah, unless I'm moving, I don't need that. But I need to find a summer shoe. But I can't. I can't. I mean, it's hard to. I feel very uninspired by all clothes right now. So that, that like when I just bought stuff from Memorial Day, I just bought them from like some whatever stores, nothing crazy. Just because like I need yeah. stuff to wear on TV, but nothing that I'm inspired by. It all kind of sucks. It does. And there's like this vintage store near my house that I keep going into and the owner is like completely insane. She, I think she's my age and she's like, she keeps talking to me. She's so weird. But um, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'd rather just go fish through there to get stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Pick Close up stuff right here now. and there. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not into it. Or if, if I feel like I'm like, ooh, I would like to wear like a pretty dress, but like those don't look good on camera. Like it's one thing for real life, but they never look good on camera. Like a no. flowy, pretty dress. No, thank you. Well, I just had a cast dinner at Second City, and I found this dress at H and M, and I mean, on the rack it looked brutal. And then like I had to bring in my own belt, but then it turned yeah. into be a good outfit. But I mean, I'm oh, just great. Um. So I had this weird transition. Oh, I guess we should talk about our sponsor. And then I want to oh, yeah. talk about, do you remember this makeup artist from Toronto named Lucky? 
Yeah. I don't know her, but I follow her on Instagram. Me too. So did you see her summer essentials? No. Okay. So I have it pulled up. So we'll go through it. But do you want to, we'll do our sponsor. And then... Okay. Let's do our sponsor and then we'll okay. do that. We'll do Great. That. Okay. okay. So for our sponsor today, we're talking about ritual. So Ooh. forget everything that you thought you knew about vitamins. Ritual is a brand that's reinventing the experience with nine essential nutrients women lack the most. So if you're ready to invest in your health, do what I did and go to ritual.com slash regular. Your future self will certainly thank you for taking ritual. Consider it your lifelong health 401k. Why put anything but clean ingredients uh, backed by real science into your body? Just go to ritual.com slash regular. So Ritual is an amazing place for supplements. So it will fill sort of any holes that you're feeling that you have in your diet. They have an amazing omega-3 that they say tastes incredibly good. There's natural mint essential oils, which I've been leaning Hell into. Yes. So Hell good. yeah. Vitamin D. Uh, vegan, mm-hmm. sugar-free, non-GMO, gluten-free, and allergen-free. Yes, and it's made in the USA without synthetic fillers or colorants, which is a big thing in supplements that you have to watch out for. And they have a delayed release capsule bypasses the stomach to help prevent nausea. Which looks very cool. The pills look very cool. It looks like pure science. It's badass. <laughs> the pills look like pure science. <laughs> Full science. Uh, so it's subscription based and there's no gap in the nutrient levels. It's $30 a month and it's delivered straight to your door. Uh, and buying Omega 3 yourself uh, is the cost of a ritual bottle. So you're good. And fills the gaps in your diet for the best sourced ingredients. Yeah. And if you, do, if you forget a few days, which I mean, we all do, uh, oh you God. can um, snooze your order until you catch up. So you can say, hold on and then get that's back smart. on your schedule, which is so great because I mean, that's that's what I get stressed out about with subscriptions. Me too. Um, Me too. When I stopped doing it. But um, and happiness guaranteed. So no questions asked. You can cancel it easily at any time. So you can figure out if this is right for you. But um, yeah, go to ritual.com slash regular and try out. Some get on it. Ritual. Yeah, I get a little nervous about subscription based things sometimes, but I do love it. Um, yes, so I've got I, right. I'm, I'm due the subscription with Glossier and I've done subscription with um, way Jen Atkins hairline stuff. It's great. Really? Yeah, I'm nervous about easy. the Glossier thing. Uh, so I, I don't know when I signed up for that, to be fair. I just got an email that was like, your order's on its way. And I was like, what did really? I get? Um, but I did like a three-month thing, but I got another a, a cream blush and a boy brow. But what I think I'm actually probably going to cancel my subscription to those because I still have a fair amount. But I'm going to get on the subscription for the, um, for the um, serums. Oh, because I go yeah. through those bad boys. I love the serums at Glossier. Yeah. Okay. Talk to me about Lucky. Sorry, I just okay. ran my ring so across my. So Lucky, uh, her Instagram. I'm gonna pull it up right now so I can give you all the things. So she goes by a uh, Lucky Makeup on Instagram. She's a makeup artist here in the city, and um, I love her Instagram. She works on Shit's Creek, and which is a yeah, she's show cute. Here. She does Catherine yeah. O'Hara's makeup. I'm in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like and. stunning and amazing. Um, so she posted, uh, she's like, now that summer is finally here, thought I'd share what I've been wearing makeup and skincare wise lately. I like to keep it pretty simple. I like a good mix of high and low quality things. And um, she's like, she values skincare over like makeup, which is like a yeah. huge thing. And huge. I also found another makeup artist that I will also share um, that is the same thing. Um, so she says, so her big thing is La Mer. Oh, of course. Yeah. And she's got a few Heaven. La Mer products here. Yeah, I mean, La Mer's, if you can afford it, La Mer's incredible. I've never used it, but I'm I'm afraid to try it because I think I'm going to love it and then have to continue to use it, and it's so bloody expensive. You can get a small container for like 80 bucks, which is so expensive, but if you ever want to try it, your face, like, I tried it once. The next day, I was like, my f- face is a baby. Um, How much is a regular bottle of it? It's like $300, isn't it? Yeah, it's expensive, but she has like three products on it. She has... The La Mer Moisturizing Cream, which is what I used. She has a moisturizing serum as well. From La Mer as well? Yeah. I'll uh, I'll link her post so you guys can see it if you're interested. But there's a lot of La Mer products, which I was like, no. Um, <laughs> don't, don't have the money. It seems fun. She really promotes Inglot, um, J-Lo's collaboration with Inglot. Oh, this, okay. This blush. It's a little peach. Um she also talks about a lip gloss. I don't know if we're into that. But here's something. If um, Glossier is a little too pricey for people, which it is for people, um, Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer. She's like, um, it is the best, bar none. Doesn't beat really? anything else. Yep. 
Wow. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm down to try it for sure. I bought the wrong one at Choppers and it was like a chalk eyebrow and I like put oh. it on and I just had chalk all over my face. <laughs> it was oh my God. Yeah. And I was going on. I was like, well, I was following Lucky's recommendations. Um, <laughs> She also Isn't says, "Isn't she lucky?" <laughs> just, just covered in like brown chalk all over my face. I was like, "I'm what a disaster." Uh, um, so she also, I feel like when I, when you use boy brow, do you yes. pencil in your brow and then use boy brow or just oh. boy brow? Well, here's the thing. So when I got boy brow, I got the clear kind. Um, yes. So I fill it in with a NYX um, uh, eyebrow pencil, and I'll okay. I'll fill it in, and then. Um, and then I put in the boy brow. But I'm going to repurchase with a light brown. Yeah, I have. I bought the blonde because I, I had the brown, which was too much for me. And then I just did the blonde because I found the brown. It's like because it is like fairly intense. Uh, really? It can, I, I find it is. Yeah. Like I found when I put on boy brow, I'm like, whoa, I'll like catch myself in the mirror. And I'm like, whoa, my eyebrows. Like it's, yeah. it's pretty. Uh, I feel like it's like pretty substantial. Um, so that's why I went up a shade. I might even try the clear one because I have my eyebrows microbladed as well. So like I don't oh, want to do look like. Yeah, get the I don't clear. Like, uh, uh, what's his name? Count Count Chocula or whatever. <laughs> um, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> not Count Chocula. What's the what's the count from Sesame Street? I can't think of his name right now. No, just I, the count. Is the he count. just the count? I yeah. <laughs> it, I'm not looking it up, and I refuse to look into it. Yeah, it is the count. <laughs> it's just the count. Well, um, that's gonna be my Instagram picture for oh, this yeah. post. Everybody, it's cow chocula or whatever. You guys know what I mean? Cow chocula or whatever. <laughs> um, she also recommends, and I am gonna buy this. Um, she and I don't. Maybe I won't buy it. I don't know. I'm on the fence. She says. Um, L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara in Cobalt Blue. She said it wakes up oh. tired eyes and gives a pop of summer color. Sometimes I, so I've been kind of leaning into that a little bit where like um, two things of like a colored eyeliner in like a cat eye. I, I, it's a, a look I would normally hate. Yes. And I feel like I'm starting to like it a little bit. Oh, I have bought a cobalt blue eyeliner and I do it for the show and it's incredible. It's so pretty. Yeah. Uh, especially if you put a lash over it too and it sure. just like, it ups the glam, but it makes it like less about just the eyeliner, yep. you know? So it's not like so much of just that one look. You will add a lash to it and it can kind of smooth it out with adding more, I guess. But I've also been very into the new resurgence of the white eyeliner. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm into I'm it. I'm going to send fan. you... I'm going to send you pictures of it to change your mind. Well, I've seen cool photos, but I'm like, am I ever going to do that? No. Oh, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it a whirl. Ooh, well, cool. I'm a little scary right now because I just got my hair done. So I'm like platinum hair. Yeah, you are. Pale face. Yeah, it's super. I, I just got it done yesterday. So it needs like a week. Uh, but yeah, yesterday I was getting my hair done. I was like, I look ill because I was like the same color as my hair. So I had so to go to like get sit tan? in the sun yesterday. Yeah, I got to get a tan. The, it's not cute. But if I add a little, I think I can get away with a little liner. I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you and the I, world will be better I, off. I, I can't wait to become a believer. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, the, I think that what I'm really, I think I probably won't deter outside of a blue because I, I smudge with a blue and a light brown on my, on my uh, lash line. Yeah, I mean, blue works for you too. It works with like your coloring really. I, you could do green too. Green would look great on you. Oh, I bet you it would. Yeah. yeah, you know who has really nice liners like that is um, uh, Lancome has really nice like yeah. pigmented color uh, eyeliners. To get on they're that. awesome. Yeah, they're really pretty. Um, Love them. She also recommends something that I want to try: um, a Bioderma, which is I use the micellar water or micellar water. Yeah. But she said they have a foundation and it looks like a tinted moisturizer, so it's kind of like Glossier, but um, it has an SPF fifty. Oh, that's great. Totally. So I'm like, yes, please. Hell yeah. Um, and then the last thing she recommends, which I've been hearing a lot about and I want to try, are th like it's called Noon N U U N hydration tablets. So you put okay. them in water and it makes you, oh, it adds. They're like, it's like a powder thing, yeah? yeah? We yeah. have them. They're amazing. Uh, yeah, they're good. They're really great. John's been on them for a while. It, it just tastes like Gatorade, essentially. Um, but yeah, they're are they like these? the hydration. Can I show you the photo? Are they yeah, these? Yeah, show me it. Let me see if in it's the same. Can you see? Hold on. Let me set this up. Can you see this in the corner? Oh, it's not that. No. I've but had those same. before, though. Um, let me see the ones that I'm talking about. Um, I, I, I have to look them up after because I, the thing I have up here is my next story and I don't want to close it. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> well, anyway, that's but they're my like le- hydration packs, and they're great. Oh, I'll put okay. them on my Instagram story so you guys can see them. Oh, great! Um, but they're like you know, like those collagen package things yeah. you can get to add to your water. They're like that, but hydration packs. And do you feel like more hydrated? Like do you feel yeah. amazing? It just has all the electrolytes and whatnot in it. Like they're great for yeah, they're they're it's just great for you. Sweet. They t- they're like the ones we have are like the lemon lime flavor ones, and they're awesome. But I've seen those noon ones before. I've seen like that package. Yeah. She's so I reached out to her because I'm uh, lame and um, I was just like, hey, where'd you get those hydration tablets? Because I was like, the rest of this is like shoppers or I know where to get them. But yeah. and she messaged me back. and I thought that was really cool. Oh, that's great. What did she say? She said Whole Foods, which in oh, Toronto, great. there's one, but I'm going to go on Amazon and get some. But yeah, there's I only mean, one in Toronto. That's shocking. Yes. And also she posted this photo of her face and I'm sure if she I mean, she doesn't listen to this, but I feel like a real creep. But I'm also I really want to buy her glasses. Like, look at this. Look at these glasses. Wait. I need. I want to get these huge freaking oh, glasses. Oh, those are good. Those are really good. She looks really pretty. Um, yeah, I need. To, I need to go get new glasses. We just got new healthcare. Whoop whoop. Ooh. So I'm gonna go get my eyes done and get new glasses, and Absolutely. you know, go to the dentist. Maybe get some dentures. I'm not sure. Um, anyways, <laughs> on to our next story. <laughs> Do you mean veneers? No, no, dentures. You're gonna pull them all out. All of them. Well, I mean, you pull them all out for veneers, anyways. That's oh Take my god! Them out. You have Get little stakes, little toothpicks. That would actually be really scary. It would freak me out. Oh, my dad has veneers. veneers. Is weird. Well, I know so many people that have veneers, and sometimes they're really fantastic yes but i feel like i mean everyone when they first get veneers goes full hillary duff do we remember that oh i use that reference all the time because it, yeah i was like what happened to her face it, she had it to grow into her everything. teeth everything yeah no i think she must have got them redone because they were terrible yeah i terrible. think she had to get brand new ones yeah i mean that was also like 10 years ago yeah things have but- come a long way since then <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm always yeah. nervous. Okay, what's your next story? Okay, so um, we talked briefly before hopping on here, but I know you have yes. not seen any of The Bachelorette. No, I, I will be watching it this weekend. This yeah. is my plan. Uh, we watched it last night. How do we um, feel? Um, So I feel, I actually feel pretty good about it. Okay. I feel, so, um, She's boring. I, I, sure, she's boring, but like she's not... She, I don't think she's like a dud though. Like she's not like a nerd. Like she's just like a little subdued, which I do feel like when mm-hmm. the spotlight is right on her, that that might change. I, right. She's not like this like wild maniac, but um, I feel like some of the guys are douchey, of course, as that's going to happen. But when they played the trailer, so they like went through the first whole like introduction of all the guys coming out of limousine, blah, 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 meeting all the dudes. Um, and then when they do like the last like minute or two of like the trailer for the rest of the season, it looks like some shit goes down. Well, I hope so because they have the to. last season they need it. was, oh God. And like, I can't like Ari now is on people.com being like, we're getting married. It's like, no one cares, dude. Absolutely uh, yeah. And like, care. don't start apologizing for how you came across on TV now. No. no one cares. It was very like weird how many dudes like kept bringing Ari up though. During the rose, uh, during the like introductions, well, she just gotten dumped. Yeah, but like one of the guys got out of the limo with an RE cutout. It, it was why terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it was really scary. Um, and then another guy just showed up in like a race car outfit and like was like, "Haha, just kidding, I'm not a race car driver." And then took it off. Like it was all weird. Like. Not cute. Like, it wasn't, like, charming. It was like, okay, I get it. Thanks. It's just so funny where, like, when it's um, The Bachelor, the girls are, like, really trying to impress. Where, like, the guys come out and they're like, screw you. Well, at one point, so one of the dudes that's on there is a former Harlem Globetrotter. So he brings her out to the basketball court. He's like, all right, hold the ball here. Trust me. And he comes up and grabs a ball and dunks over her. And it's pretty sick. It's really cool. Um, but a bunch of the guys are standing around watching. Yeah. And you can see they're all like, shit, what do I do now? So they all just start playing basketball. And like, it's just going to be dudes playing basketball. Forget the Becca's there. Just like trying to like macho, well, out macho each other. I mean, that's the thing about The Bachelorette that I find quite funny is like, they all become friends. And I feel like it's less emotional than, than The Bachelor because the girls yeah. are so, and I don't mean this rudely, High but stakes. like desperate to get married or just be chosen. Yeah. Where like, I feel like The Bachelorette, the guys, it becomes competitive. Half of them probably don't even care. Yeah. Are there to just travel and be bros. Yeah. I think like for women though, too, I feel like 
it makes women more vulnerable being on there too. That like oh, yeah. they're being judged. They're on camera for probably, you know, one of the first times ever. So like that's a stressful situation. Oh, for sure. They're doing a reality show. Everyone's up their ass. They're worried about what they're wearing. Guys don't care about that shit. Where they're Do just not like, care. yeah, here's my, I, I brought a few suits and a couple, like they don't care. Where the women, like, I don't know if you read about um, Becca. Becca M, how Went she broke. had, yeah, she went broke and like had to like return a bunch of her stuff and like some people lent her stuff for like the show, but it's like, it's that pressure to look a certain way and like come out in your Louboutins and your Chanel boots and like put that yeah. foot forward where that's not, that does not even register for the dudes at all, it's, except it's for insane. one of the guys in the show, but. It's insane to me that they have to provide, like, what a racket. You have to provide all your clothes. Yeah, like, even, like, okay, so I can get for, like, your day-to-day clothes. That's fine. But, like, they should have sponsorships from gown places to dress all the women in their evening Uh, wear. A thousand percent. Absolutely. It's, like... Getting an evening dress, like, I mean, to buy, like, to even buy, like, a middle-of-the-road evening dress, it's, like, 300 bucks. Easy. 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 Even Easily. if you go to Fairweathers. Remember Fairweathers? Oh, my in God. Canada. Fairweathers. Um, okay, so Sorry. the guy that got the um, first impression yes. rose, Garrett, yes. is uh, receiving a bit of backlash. He's in a little bit of hot water that, of I course. guess, through social media... Um, he had been uh, liking a series of controversial posts, uh, including memes that mocked immigrants, Parkland Studios, transgender people, liberals, among some others. Um, Brutal. And I guess he deleted his account shortly after that. But uh, which is, I mean, crazy. Listen, I watched the show last night. I do not know this man, but from the beginning, I was like, oh, he seems sweet. He's a little goofy and awkward and weird, but like, seems yeah. sweet enough. But then you go on and you. Uh, even if you think like you're harmlessly clicking on something or, I mean, something like that. It's like, I mean, that seems very black and white to me. Of, oh, for sure. How did you, you know, how do you fall upon that? I mean, sure. Do I sometimes like right. my own post by accident? Sure. <laughs> but I'm not yeah. falling into hateful diatribes and going, exactly. oops, accident. Yeah. Hell no. no. And series upon series, like several different versions of Cannot. them. Like, absolutely not. What a pile of garbage yeah i know it's it's really um yeah it's a little terrifying um but yeah so he he got the um he got first that very impression. first row first impression rose and yeah just a bummer so hopefully based on of like what we saw of like the trailer going off is like there's a lot of crying a t- like a really? lot of like uh, yeah a lot of crying from like on both ends there's like a ton of dudes crying someone gets carted off in an ambulance of at one course. point <laughs> of course yeah of they're course like there are they're really going for it so uh yeah i'm excited to watch this um season i'm into it i'm gonna be I, there for it i'm gonna be there for it too i'm i'm gonna invest i i kind of was not so into the last season but Me neither. i I love The Bachelor, but I'm wondering too if um, if the series is taking a dive. Are people talking about it as much as they were? No, no, of course not. They can't be. I mean, look at how many look at how many shows there are on television, right. on Netflix, on Hulu, on Amazon. Like, I don't know how people keep up with shows in general anymore. I don't me, know what's me cool neither. to watch or like. Any time I'm like, oh, I wish we had like a new series to watch or like a new thing to get into. It's like, how do you even pick? There's so much. Well, um, I I found maybe the dumbest show on Netflix that if you and John are ever looking for something in the background that's so stupid. Um, it's called Nailed It. And I thought of you when I started watching it. It's hosted <laughs> by Nicole Byer, which is so funny. She's so funny. But um, uh, so basically it's like home chefs or, ba- or bakers and um, they give them like an hour to try and recreate like Pinterest level like oh that's baked great goods. but that's like there's great. no way they can succeed because already they don't have enough talent I feel like that's my <laughs> only criticism of the series where I'm like if you put real bakers and all they right. had was an hour like I'd be interested right. but yeah. they're they're terrible and then they have to recreate so they had like one of the most famous wedding cake makers who did like Kim K's wedding cake and whatever she was on the first episode and they had to like create a wedding cake in an hour and it oh. is. I'm telling you, like they provide them with the cake, like they have to decorate it. It is honestly, I was like laughing so hard. Wow. Okay. I will check that out. You have to do a couple episodes, but like, yeah, the first one. Oh, I was like, what is this show? 
Um, speaking of different chefs and stuff, I just found um, this girl who's got a new Food Network show coming out in June, I think. Yeah. Uh, let me get her here because she is adorable and definitely worth the follow. Her name's Molly Ye or Yeah. <gasps> I know exactly who you're talking Isn't about. Isn't she, she like so precious? She lives on a farm with her husband. She's so cute. I love her. Okay, what's her name again? Because I'm going to follow her on Instagram it's right now. Molly, uh, and then the last name is Y E H. Yes. So Molly Ye, okay. Have you, she has videos. I'm obsessed with her. She is so stinking yes. cute. I am going to send you, I am going to send you um, some videos of her on YouTube where you're just like, right. your life is freaking stunning. She moved from New York to like this little farm. It's so cute. And like, it made me like, I'm not like, I, I'm not like a, a dessert person in the sense of like wanting to eat desserts. Um, yeah. But I like, I like even I made like a pie the other week. Like I've, I, I want, saw that. Are you freaking kidding me with that pie? It, and it turned the, out quite great. I will say. And the photography. You're, don't think those sunflowers went unnoticed. <laughs> don't think so, they did. Let me just talk for a quick second about um, how Please. people like to find a reason to shit on absolutely everything. Why? Somebody wrote on my website. I don't know if it went through or not, if it's like on my comments or it popped through for me to uh, approve it or not. Um, but somebody went on and was like, next time you buy a, a, buy a pie from the grocery store, make sure that it fits into the crust that you made. Like as if I went to the grocery store, bought this pecan pie People. and plopped it into my too big of crust, which yes, my crust was too big, whatever. I'm figuring it out. But like, Get oh real. My. Get real. Get a life and get out of here. What get are people doing? Real. You, a pie. A pie ruined your day. <laughs> really? Like, I, I, could you imagine looking at a picture of a pie and like feeling so annoyed about it that you have to like, oh, po- like get a life. Renee, uh. I ate pie off the kitchen floor. My grandmother dropped it. Listen, I don't <laughs> care. Pie enters my life. It's a good day. So I will say for um, the key photography skills is putting the pie on the floor. You take it on Must. the floor Must. next to the window because um, I bought um, like a ring light and I bought like a nice camera. So yeah. I'm like, I need to figure out how to make these photos look nicer when I post food stuff because it all just looks very underwhelming. Um, and yeah, that's I bought all this stuff without reading a blog. And then I was like, oh, they still look like shit. It looks like I'm taking them on a surgeon table. Yes. Can I give you uh, another little tip I found about please. food photography? So I follow Hot for Food. Uh, yeah. And um, Lauren Toyota, who's the uh, blog lady behind that, she buys like sur- like floor tiles. Like you can go to the Home Depot and get like a wooden floor tile. or like. Oh a, my God, that's so smart. So then she puts it on the floor and then you have like a wood base or like you can get like slate or marble. I love that. That's brilliant. That is so yeah. smart because I was actually thinking and that. And it's I was cheap. Like, I was like, man, all my pictures are going to look the same because it's just no. on my hardwood floors. Uh, but that's such a brilliant idea. I love that. Yeah. And good for you for posting. And I should tell you this, if you're getting into the uh, Baker's game, I just watched Chef's Table, like the latest uh, season. I, ha- you I went it? to put it on. I went to put it on the other day when I was like trying to have a nap because it is like the most peaceful, beautiful show to me. Absolutely. Uh, but then I, I wanted I to actually watch it. So I actually shut it off. So I haven't seen it. The first episode is the creator of Milk, who's an amazing oh. bake shop in Brooklyn. Um, I think there's like a million locations. But it's now, like but. it's Momofuku, right? Like Momofuku Milk Bar. But or yeah, no? but it's it is. It's associated. But um she like she created it and david chang was like the person I pushing love david her chang. oh david yeah Chang's so cool did you know that he apparently i haven't gotten all uh, through ugly delicious but he goes to mother dumplings on college in spadina for oh, dumplings really? apparently Great. someone said that to me which is my favorite dumpling house in toronto but um i actually do that a lot now so when i travel and i'm looking for a place to go i check where ugly delicious has been and then i check where um anthony bourdain has gone those are like you my two to. main ones yeah th- those guys know what's up obviously for sure it's brilliant yeah. brilliant but check out the milk thing because it's like um i don't know i just think milk i've never gone but like i just like the it's branding great. and the way that they oh. shoot things and it's really cool. So I, the first time that I had milk was at um, the Union Square Market. They set up there at Christmas time, and, and is they it have good? like, oh, it's amazing. So they've got like the different flavored milks. Um, that they've their big one is like the the cereal milk, I think, or like the banana yeah. milk. 
Um, but then they have these great cookies. One's a compost cookie, which is really great. Um, mm. And then their other thing is the crack pie. Yeah, which uh, I really want to try. Yeah, is I've not insane? had the crack pie. I've not had it, but... Um, so there's a milk opened in Vegas now because David Chang opened a Momofuku in the right. Cosmopolitan. So there's a milk there. Um, but then, yeah, there's a few of them in New York that there's like just a milk spots and then like the couple different Momofukus. But don't they... So they don't have it in Toronto at the at the Momofuku that you guys have there? Oh, maybe they do. I haven't even I bet even you they in. do. They'll probably have the crack pie for sure, I would imagine. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I ha- I would have... I'm going to go check it out or I'm going to Google it for sure. Because I was like... You can order it too. Yeah, but I'm like, is it going to be good? I know. I know. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a I really want her birthday cake. I want to try that. And I want to try the crack great. pie. Yeah. But I just like, they just seem so fun. Like, I mean, that, I have no, um, I love to cook, but I don't have a baking skill uh, in my do body. I. Yeah. It, baking is always overwhelming to me because it's science. You can't, you can't, there's no room for error. But there's something about like owning a business. Like I, I mean, I'm not a baker, but like. I would love that, like a tiny little shop. I mean, I for a while, I just wanted to own a knickknack shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like tiny. Yeah. Like, there's something about being a business owner that I'm like quite drawn to in a way that I can't comprehend. Wow. I like this. Well, what kind of knickknacks are we talking here? Oh, I don't know. I mean, for a while, I was like, I'll make them. And then I was like, what are you talking about? Um, <laughs> just like, I mean, they're like literally this girl who owns this vintage store. I'm like, you're an insane person, but she's like curated an amazing little vintage shop. And I was like, that'd yeah. be the best. You just hang out all so day. Cool. Yep. And like, I, I like the idea of like that hunt too, of like getting the cool stuff. Yeah. Being proud of the things that you found around town and whatever. Yeah. I used to have a dream of having a used bookstore and a bakery. That's the best. Oh, well, yeah. You know what? Together, it, like a hybrid. There's a, um, I just found a little laundromat near my place. That's like a full coffee shop. That's cute as all hell. And then like the laundry machines are in the back. So you can literally Love. just sit at a bistro table and have a coffee and work while you're doing your that's why are more laundromats not like that? They should all be like that. I know. I mean, I'm doing a fluff and fold right now and I feel like a real princess. Let me oh, tell you. Isn't it lovely? It really oh. is great. I used to do that in New York. Oh, you drop it off. They you pick it up if you want or they deliver it. Who cares? It's um, genius. I love it. But there was something really inspiring about. I don't know what it was. I watched this chef's table and I was like, God damn it. I want to be a business owner. Just, I like, like have this. a little shop, but I don't know. I, I no, I, 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 it's like funny when like certain things like that pop in your head and then you um, like I've got a couple different ideas of things that I want to do that um, aren't right. that are that are a deviation off of what I do right now. Um, but it's like I feel like I think about them and then trying to actually put pen to paper or try to make them come to fruition is like obviously that's the next step. But it's hard. It's also hard because we as impulsive people, as my yes. therapist would say and agree, um, I just jump into things way too quickly and then I fizzle out because it's like, oh, right. I'm not prepared to even keep the momentum, but yeah. yeah. And I feel or like, to see it through. Oh yeah. And especially in this industry, it's like, I mean, you can't act forever. I mean, it just doesn't no. happen. So then it's you like, can't. you gotta, you gotta goop it. You gotta go out of Paltrow yes. your career. And it's like, or yeah. Jessica Alba. I mean, who yeah. literally oh cares God. about a movie? Yeah. Who's ever gone, oh, I want to see it, that Jessica Alba thing. Nobody. I mean, Honey had its moment, but Honey had it. its, yeah. Jessica Simpson, no music we do not nope. want. Nope. Not into it at all. But oh my God, you're adorable and your kids are cute. Great. Yeah. Post that. Keep selling wedge sandals and bell bottoms. People love them. <laughs> they love it. But it's like. Yeah, what? I really like, I just, I, I really love, um. I have a real fascination. I, I just love books in general, but like a, a really beautiful cookbook or like any kind yes. of DIY books, like those things just like they talk to my soul. I love them. Well, I think you're slowly on the track or not even slowly. I mean, you're like the photo was I was like, ooh, she's got little props going. Yes. But um, I, one of my favorite things, too, is having fresh flowers in the house. So they serve as a beautiful prop. Oh my God, that's the nicest thing I've ever freaking heard. They're only five, you buy a bunch for five bucks. I bought, I just, I, so I just swapped out those sunflowers that were in that picture and uh, it's a mixture of different, like Gerber daisies, they're five bucks a bunch and they just make the house a little brighter and fresher and lo- like more lovely. It's so Easy. true. Get Easy. plants, guys. Must. Yeah. Get them. God, we're almost on the podcast and we didn't even get to talk about Roseanne, but I feel like maybe it's okay because 
Yeah. We were talking about such nice things and she's so negative. I can't even believe. I mean, I loved that show so much growing up and it was like so important to me. <laughs> but growing yeah. up, which I feel weird t- talking about a television show like that, but it's like, it's sad. It's like watching someone go completely off the deep end and there's just no, there's there's no way you can stand behind or even understand. Do you think that understand. she went off the deep end or you think she was just always like that? I think she was always like that and it's like, I don't know. I think she's really like, disillusioned about things and it's wrong right. and it's like I you know for a while I think people were trying to like contain her or justify yeah. it and then it's like at some point I mean that does a disservice to you like you have to certainly well I mean even as even like Roseanne she said she's like well if it didn't happen now it's gonna happen later because as soon as they tried to contain me I was out I would not let anybody uh kind of get between me and my thoughts and having my voice out there or whatever I would stand beside but Yeah, I feel like it was sort of inevitable for this to happen. And it's unfortunate because like I haven't watched the full series, but the couple episodes I watched, I was like, oh, yeah, this is a really good show. And like, you know, it's just so it's just sad. And it's like, it makes me really sad for Whitney Cummings because she's worked so hard, it seems to like, oh, yeah, keep stuff happening and like be in the know with stuff. And like, it's a bummer that she had this show that was actually like, really successful for a reboot and now it's gone like sucks for how many people worked on that show that now aren't working oh for sure that's really sad do you um do you follow whitney cummings on instagram with her like horse that she has that (laughs) she runs around and i'm (laughs) yeah and i (laughs) what the fuck i'm like what are you doing woman just so many dogs and so rich yeah it's all just like well is she so rich she seems it i mean she travels like she does stand up a bunch. She writes a bunch. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? She's probably rich off of two broke girls. For sure. That's what she's rich off of. Yeah. Do you know right. who's I forgot like, she had that. I keep following Amy Schumer on Instagram and I I mean, she has just gotten so incredibly rich. It's beyond. It's insane how rich she is. Oh, oh my it's God. Crazy. Holy, yeah. I, I wonder, I, I have no idea what her net worth is, but man, that woman has cranked some stuff out. Good for her. Oh yeah, I haven't seen her new movie. Is it good? I haven't seen it either and I really want to see it. Um, right. But yeah, I haven't gone to see it. I went and saw a drift last night. It was pretty good. Oh, Shailene Woodley. Yeah. Cannot get behind. Also, <laughs> I have no time for Shailene. Um, except she got me onto like charcoal deodorant, uh, which I do enjoy. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> I wanted to put this out here before we end the pod because I want to start um, just a slow observance of what I think is happening. And I'm very excited to announce this. Okay. I think we're about to enter a fat Pratt territory. (gasps) I think what makes you say this? Well, I talk to me. I saw some photos on my very um, up to date news source, people.com and star (laughs) tracks. We've taken notes and he was just like there was just a photo where I was like oh he's relaxed a bit oh wow okay he's put on maybe he's just loosed he's just loosening up he's not as yep. like wired well he's well I don't know some people go one of two ways that you get on like that divorce diet and you're like ready to just like challenge the world or you're just like right. ah, I don't know anymore and then like it's it's one of two things I mean, I don't want him to go like full, full. I mean, but I wouldn't hate it. But also, I think I'm about to enter like peak fat prat territory. And I'm very peak. peak. I think he's about to, I think in the next if, if he keeps going like the next couple of months and he really loosens up, then it's going to be like yeah. the perfect husk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, I do have a joke about fat prat at Second City and, and only like maybe four or five people laugh at it. But I know that those are my people. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I didn't do a fat prat. Fat Pratt joke no. to his face. I'm really glad I didn't. I would have regretted that, yeah. it. I would have lost that, sleep <laughs> about it. I would have been having the fear sweats. Oh my God. Yeah, the one Burke can stalk through Richmond and Spadina. Honestly, I walked past it and I did a full surveillance of that large intersection being like, where is that sandal? <laughs> like... Ah, it's like stuck in the streetcar tracks. It's so Dude, great. It's like I po- it was like out of like a French Parisian like rom com. <laughs> like I popped a- off like a little hill, and it was like ooh, and off it went. I feel like I was gonna say I feel like I hear like the background of like some like funny Woody Allen movie music, but it also is basically the music to this podcast that playing oh, while you lost your Birkenstock. Absolutely, I was gonna say Benny Hill, like <laughs> <laughs> it's just like me trying to bike so fast on Barb and just couldn't do it. I couldn't get I couldn't go fast if I wanted to. 
pedal spikes digging into your foot. Oh, my foot. So I, bad. I had to put like a, a wet wipe when I got in. I didn't want to ruin <laughs> my rug till I could get to the bathroom. Washing my foot in the sink like a real uh, loser. Hey, you know what? Sometimes a foot bath really rejuvenates your day. Honestly, guys, and if you are wearing flats in the summer, <laughs> don't negate a little foot bath. <laughs> If, if you can smell it, we can smell it. And that's yep. the rule of the summer. That's how, it, yep. If you can smell it, we can smell it. I love that. What a great rule. That's fantastic. Well, do you have anything else you want to say before we end this week's pod? Not a damn thing. You? <laughs> if we can, if you can smell it, we can smell it. I just There's no way I can have a better out than what you just said. I can't <laughs> compete with that. <laughs> Listen, I'm just a woman who lost her shoe and could have easily <laughs> gone back but decided to keep pushing forward. Fuck it. And now has I to swore replace. I twice on this podcast. I don't care. Sue I don't me. Care. Well, I'm excited for the next food post, Renee, so keep them coming. They'll be, they'll be coming. I'm going to barbecue tonight, so get ready Woo. for that. Awesome. Well, um, everyone have Hell a nice yeah. week, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.